So, this is an older snapshot once again, but it's not by me, it's by Go Berserk in his KB2, a player after my own heart. And he's been doing some work, he's picked up some damage, killed a couple of tanks, and um, yeah, I've had this, as I say, I found it in a snapshot folder that I'd forgotten I had. So, I apologize for not bringing it to the channel sooner, Go Berserk, but um, Go Berserk's in his KB2, and he's loving the KB2. And there's a lava over there in the middle, and not much to shoot at. Okay, but go berserk, you know, he's sensing a, maybe a nice side shot the lava over there, but nope, nope. Let's get down here, try not to damage the tank. Oh, there we go. All right, we've done it, we've done it. So go berserk is advancing, and you can see him still looking over to where the lava was last spotted. And Yep, yeah, okay, KB2 doesn't have view range, but there's the lava. Oh, he's sitting still, he's sitting still. Aim, 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 aim. And even the lever was too quick. He got out of the way. I don't know if the lever knows how lucky he was to avoid getting tracked and damaged with HE there, but um, Go Berserk is sitting here for another 20 seconds or so. And the lever is moving into cover. Oh, that's not good. That, that's not good. There is a gap. Oh, you're not. Oh, go berserk, you're not. You're not going to do this, are you? No outline, through the buildings. Oh, yes, he gets the lava in the end. So, um, yeah, some wonderful, wonderful sniping. Best sniper in the game, KB2. And once again, sorry, sorry, it's taken me so long to show that shot in the channel, go berserk. I completely forgot I had the replay, but um, anyway, let's move on to today's video. Hi folks and welcome to the Ace Tanker for the SU-101 or the SU-101, the Tier 8 uh, Russian Tank Destroyer. And it's a tank I rebought in order to get an Ace because I was an idiot. I ended up um, grinding through this originally, didn't pick up an Ace Tanker and absolutely hated the tank. And then I got to the uh, Tier 9 SU-12254, took forever, forever to Ace that tank. But when I finally did, the plan was to go back buy this one, put the crew from the SU-12254 in it, ace it, and then move to tier 10. But um, I was so happy after acing the SU-12254, I just went straight ahead and bought the tier 10 and completely forgot about this one. So uh, I was checking my aces and I realized that this is the only uh, ace tanker I needed on the Russian TDs. This is the last Russian TD I need to get an ace tanker in, so uh, we're done with Russian TDs after this particular game. Uh, but I went back and I bought the tier 8, um, and uh, yeah, I might as well just start with the history, because um, in 1944, Russia were trying to move away from front-mounted tank destroyers, because front-mounted tanks had a lot of problems that are pretty obvious when you think about it. I mean, I didn't think about it till I was researching the TDs, but um, first of all, if you've got a front-mounted tank destroyer, um, the most of the armor, the, the heaviest armor, is going to be on the front of the tank, which means it's heavier on front. But then you add the gun and the gun mount to the weight of the frontal armor, and all of a sudden, the front of the vehicle gets very, very heavy, and that puts a lot of extra strain on the suspension, puts a lot of extra strain on the road wheels on the front of the tank, and that leads to reliability issues. So the tanks would tend to break down more because of the armor and front-mounted guns. Um, the second issue with a front-mounted gun on a tank destroyer is that the barrel protrudes from the front of the tank, obviously, uh, and this makes the tank much, much longer, and that means if you're trying to transport the trains uh, or transport the tanks via train or via truck for example then you basically most of the time need to take the gun off and then when the tank gets to its destination you've got to remount the gun so um, you know it leads to logistical problems and transporting of the tank uh, the gun the having the gun on front leads to problems um, and then on top of that if you've got a, a, a gun mounted on the front of a tank destroyer obviously the tank destroyer gets much much longer and you can imagine trying to use a tank destroyer in, for example, forested terrain, where basically the tank physically can't traverse because the gun 
can't move or traverse with the tank because of the trees. Um, you know, it makes a heck of a lot of sense why Russia wanted to move away from front-mounted tanks. And on top of that, then you've got the problem of um, terrain, you know, not just trees, but terrain, hills. Um, if you've got the barrel of the gun on the front of the tank and you're going down a steep incline, the barrel's going to hit the ground. You're going to damage the gun. Um, so you, you've basically got to reverse down steep inclines in order to protect the gun. And if you're trying to drive up a steep incline when you're going from flat ground and you hit the steep incline, obviously the gun is going to hit the incline before the tank. So again, you can potentially damage the gun. So forward mounted tank destroyers or forward mounted guns on tank destroyers really, when you think about it, aren't a very good idea. Um, and in 1944, as I say, Russia were trying to move away from front mounted tank destroyers because of all of these problems. So the Uralmash Design Bureau were approached in late 1944 and asked to design a new TD, um, basically to replace the SU-100. Um, by the way, if, if you've wondered what SU stands for, it's not Soviet Union, which is what I thought when I first started playing World of Tanks. SU is Russian for self-propelled gun. Um, I'll stick the name on screen if you want to try and pronounce it, but I'm not going to try. Um, but anyway, the Uralmash Design Bureau responded with five different designs for the... Uh, SU-100 replacement. Um, the first was a tank they called the SU-122P, and that was basically an SU-100 with a 122mm gun, but because the gun was still forward mounted, it, the design was rejected. The second design they suggested was again an SU-100, but this time it was using the electrical transmission that was loosely based on the transmission from the Ferdinand. Uh, they called that tank the ESU-100. Uh, but yeah, forward mounted SU-100, they wanted to replace them, so that design was rejected. Um, third, they suggested a tank called the SU-100M1. Now that is a tank we have in game as the Tier 7, and that was a tier mounted tank destroyer based on the T-3485. It was armed with a 100mm gun, uh, and uh, as I say, we have it in game as the Tier 7. And uh, the fourth suggestion was a tank they called the SU-100M2. Now, that was a rear-mounted tank destroyer based on the T-44 medium tank, the brand new T-44 medium tank, and that was also armed with a 100mm gun. Uh, and that tank, the SU-100M2, eventually became this, the SU-101. Uh, but there was one more design uh, that you might be familiar with. The fifth and final design that the uh, Uralmash uh, Design Bureau suggested to replace the SU-100 was a tank called the SU-12244, which was a forward-mounted tank destroyer based, again, on the brand new T-44 medium tank, and it was armed with a 122mm gun. Now, out of all five designs, only two were chosen. The SU-100M2 met the requirements of being a rear-mounted tank destroyer, and that design was approved. And the SU-12244 was also approved, even though it was forward-mounted. Um, but mainly it was approved because it had a big 122mm gun, and it was based on the T-44, which was a brand new toy. It was a brand new medium tank, so the Russians were interested in seeing what could come of it. So prototypes of both tanks were ordered, and the other three designs that have mentioned were rejected, including the SU-100M1, uh, the Tier 7. So that was a tank that only ever existed in design, but prototypes were ordered of the SU-100M2 and the SU-12244. However, as soon as the prototype for the SU-12244 was built, it was discovered to be, well, just too big for a tank destroyer. It was much, much bigger than an SU-100 it was going to be replacing, and it was also far too heavy. So, um, you know, on top of that, it happened to be forward mounted, which was part of the problem in the first place. So basically the SU-12244 was cancelled with just one prototype being built. However, um, they decided to build a prototype of the SU-100M2, and not only did they build one prototype, they built two, and they turned the SU-100M2 into two tanks. Uh, the first one was the uh, tank was a tank designed, or based on the T-44 as I mentioned, but armed with a 100 mm gun, and they decided to call that tank the SU-101, or the SU-101, this tank in-game. And the second version, or the second prototype, was exactly the same tank, except it was armed with a 122mm gun, and they decided to call the tank the SU-102. 
this tank. So this is the SU-101 if you decide to use a 100mm, or it's the SU-102 if you decide to use a 122mm uh, gun. Now, um, the rear-mounted, uh, the, the prototypes didn't perform very well. The rear-mounted crew, uh, crew compartments were far too small. You can see it's actually tiny on the model of the tank here. So the crew compartment at the rear of the tank, um, it was just terrible. Uh, basically, it was too small for the crew to operate efficiently in. They were far too cramped, couldn't move. Um, not only that, but there were engine problems, which meant the engine kept on overheating. And considering that the back of the tank was far too cramped for the crew, it meant there was very little air, there was ventilation problems, uh, there were overheating problems in summer, basically the, the crew compartment would get too hot, but on top of that there were engine problems where the cooling system for the engine kept on breaking down, and as a result the engine overheated, and as a result it basically meant that the crew basically were so uncomfortable they couldn't even stay in the tank, they had to get out of the tank, it just got too hot inside. So there were major problems. Um, with the size of the crew compartment at the back of the tank. Uh, also, the SU-102, the, t the version of this tank armed with 122mm, had a problem in that the recoil was far too powerful for the tank. So um, it basically broke itself every time it fired its gun. So um, despite these problems, uh, which the engineers said they could be resolved with time, but despite the problems, the tank was given the go-ahead for mass production. However, um, the project was cancelled, even though it was given the go-ahead for mass production, because World War II ended and Russia felt that basically there wasn't a need for the tank anymore. So uh, there we go. Um, the SU-101 or the SU-102, depending on what gun you decide to mount on it, uh, only two were ever built and they were prototypes. So uh, anyway, let's get into uh, the main game. Um, as I say, this is a tank you're going to love or you're going to hate. Now, the first time I played through this tank, I absolutely hated it. Could not stand this tank. Um, but the first time I played through this tank, I was relatively new to World of Tanks. The crew I had in it were terrible, and I didn't understand the difference between strengths and weaknesses of the tank. So um, I was a very new player when I first played this tank. I mean, I had only a couple of thousand games under my belt, and I hated it, absolutely hated it. Um, you know, I just could not win. No matter what I did, I couldn't win in this tank. Um, now, one nice thing I discovered after rebuying it is in a recent patch, the gun has been upgraded because originally when I played this tank, the best gun you could get in this tank was a 100mm. But the gun has since been upgraded. You now can get the 122mm that the Tier 9 SU-12254 uses. So you can unlock the final gun for the Tier 9 on the Tier Tier 8 this tank and use it and that is it was you know a very very nice surprise when I decided to rebuy the tank but there's an argument that maybe you shouldn't use the final gun. So here we've got the final gun. It's a tier 10 gun, M62, 122 millimeters. So you don't get the regular 175 millimeters of penetration and 390 alpha damage. Oh no, you get a very, very good. Remember, this is a tier eight. You get a very, very good 258 millimeters of penetration. Amazing for a tier eight. You get 440 damage, which is, you know, really good. Um, because when you were using the 100 millimeter on this tank, it felt like like you were playing a medium tank. Now, with this final gun, you feel as if you're playing a TD. You've got the alpha, you've got the penetration. Um, so the DPM is not terrible. It's quite good at almost 2,294, and then you can buff that with crew skills and equipment. So the alpha damage, penetration, and DPM aren't too bad. The reload's quite good. The gun dispersion of 0.35 is quite nice. In the garage, it actually says 0.37, not sure. Um, the gun dispersion isn't terrible. It's actually actually quite good, except after firing, uh, at which point it's quite bad. And, um, you know, the gun, it looks quite impressive. And not only that, but then you've got a lot of mobility. You've got a 54 kilometer an hour top speed, which is very, very good. You've got 16 kilometers reverse speed, which is very, very good. Horsepower to weight ratio of almost 20. That means it's very, very fast. It accelerates well. It reverses well. Um, it can get to its top speed without much help. Um, so it's quite maneuverable, the traversal.
reverse speed is quite good. Uh, the ground resistance is very good on the tank. So it's fast, it's maneuverable, it's mobile, um, it's got penetration, it's got alpha, it's got decent reload, the accuracy isn't too bad, and the aim time is absolutely garbage. It says 2.97 here, but it's actually 3.1. So it's got 3.1 second aim time. So there has to be a downside. The aim time is the downside. It's only got a three second or over a three second aim time. Um, but most of the stats for the tank are quite good. A couple of negatives you should point out is the gun depression is only two degrees. So you've got absolutely no gun depression. You've got absolutely no health. So, um, you know, it's got very low hit points for a tier eight. Uh, the hull armor is actually okay. If we take a look at the hull armor, uh, where we go 3D model, here we go. Uh, the hull armor is okay, but it's only effective against lower tier tanks. The uh, upper glacis is uh, 90 millimeters and it's well angled, so you get about 150 up to about 160 on the upper front plate. The lower glacis, again, not much different, well angled, about 150, 155. So, um, you know, you're gonna, you possibly can bounce lower tier tanks with the hull, but upper or uh, higher tier tanks gonna have no problems going through the front of the tank. So uh, then you come to the upper hull or the turret area um, and once again you've got better armor than the frontal hull and it's 186 um, so exactly like the hull it's going to cause lower tier problem or lower tier tanks problems higher tier tanks absolutely no problem going through the front of the tank if they hit the upper hull unless they hit the gun mantlet because just like the other line of Russian TDs it gets a huge gun mantlet and the gun mantlet is very very good as you can see you get up to about 300 over 300 depending on where they hit the gun mantlet so very, very good gun mantlet. It's about the best armor on the tank, but that's pretty much it. It's only armor that's effective against lower tier tanks. Um, side, absolutely garbage. Well, it's actually okay, I suppose. You're going to see in this game, we actually do bounce a couple of shots from our side. So 116, uh, which is pretty good on the upper hull. Lower hull is 75 millimeters. So actually it is, it is quite good. But what it means is you can side scrape. You can actually side scrape quite effectively in this tank, as you can see get up to 400 here. So um, you can side scrape. Rear of the tank is garbage though. It's only got 40 millimeters of armor. So if you're using a derp gun, this is where you want to get behind the tank. You want to shoot it in the rear. But um, yeah, the armor, it's effective against lower tier tanks. It's okay for a tier eight, but um, it's not very good against higher tiers. But I'm starting to ramble again because the whole point of coming into Tanks GG to show you this is this is the final gun. It's 122 millimeter and it's a brand new gun that was added in a recent patch for use on this tank. Uh, and it's a very, very good gun. It's the gun I'm going to be using in this replay. But there is an argument uh, to use the gun that I originally used on this tank. And this is a 100 millimeter. So at the moment I'm up SU-102, but using the 100 millimeter, now I'm an SU-101. So um, when we come down here, there's an argument for using the 100 millimeter. And that argument is incredible DPM. You can see that the DPM is almost 800 DPM better. So you're using the 100 millimeter as opposed to 122 millimeter. Your DPM, you get almost 800 DPM better. And that's before, as I say, equipment and crew skills. So much more DPM and the penetration, you get much less penetration, but the penetration is still very good for a tier nine. You get 258 millimeters of penetration with the final gun, the 122 millimeter, but the 100 millimeter gives you 219 millimeters of penetration. Um, the damage is a little bit lower. You go from 440 alpha down to 320, but 320 is incredibly good considering it's a 100 millimeter gun. So the alpha damage is still very good on the 100 millimeter, but the DPM, the reload, the rate of fire, and the aim time are all much, much better. You go from a 3.1 second aim time with the final gun down to a 2.01 second aim time. So basically a two second aim time, which is very, very good with the 100 millimeter. The uh, accuracy is also much, much better with the 100 millimeter. So um, it's 0 0.34, 0 0.35 versus 0 0.34. But as I say, actually in the garage, it says 0.37 for the final gun but 0.34 for the 100 millimeter is definitely better. Um, turret traverse is better. Accuracy after firing is better. So um, there's a very, very good argument to use the 100 millimeter on this tank as opposed to the final 122 millimeter. But, you know, that's just me. I preferred the alpha and I preferred the penetration because I was getting into a lot of higher tier games. So I decided to use the final gun on the tank for my second run through. I've already played this tank with the original 100 millimeter and I didn't like it. So second time round, I decided 
decided to try the 122 millimeter, um, but it does have very, very good DPM. So to sum up, basically, if you get your hands on an SU-101, what you've got is a tank destroyer that is incredibly fast, very, very good mobility, top speed of 54 kilometers an hour, very good, acceleration is very good, the reverse speed is good, um, it's got amazing DPM, uh, very good DPM with the final gun, but amazing DPM with the 100 millimeter, which isn't the final gun. Um, you've got very good penetration, depending on what gun you're using. Um, it's got very, very good camo rating, Forgot to mention the camo rating it's about the you know it's one of the best camo ratings of any of the tier 8 TDs in the game um, very very good camo rating while stationary um, and um, you know it basically means if you play this tank and you're playing it for the first time round you can unlock the final gun for the tier 9 by playing the tier 8 so um, you know th there's a lot of reasons why you should like this tank um, now the downside because there are downsides and as I say you're gonna love this tank you're gonna hate it um it's got no gun depression it's only got two degrees of gun depression and that means that shooting on the move is incredibly bad if you're driving across uneven ground the smallest bump the smallest rise in the ground means you can't get your gun on target it's not very good at shooting on the move um and because it's only got two degrees of gun depression um it, it's very very hard to get hold down because you want to go hull down, your best armor is your gun mantlet, but unfortunately, um, because you've only got two degrees of gun depression, quite often the positions you go hull down in require gun depression, and you can't use the gun depression, it's only got two degrees, so um, I find the gun depression incredibly annoying on this tank. Um, on top of that, the traverse arc for the gun, just like the higher tier tanks, is very, very narrow, so, um, you know, it's quite hard, again, to get your tank, or get your gun on target if it's, it's a if it's a moving target. Um, it's got no hit points. It's only got 990 hit points, so it can be taken out very, very easily. Um, it's only got... Uh, it's, it doesn't have a lot of ammo. It's only got around 24 rounds for the final gun, or if you're using the 100mm, it's only got about 34 rounds. So it doesn't carry a lot of ammunition. You might find yourself running out of ammunition or running low on ammunition if it's a long game and you're firing a lot of shots. And um, if you're using the final gun, the aim time is bloody awful as well. So um, there's a lot of reasons why you might not like this tank and also as I say the armor is very very ineffective against uh, higher tier tanks or even similar tier tanks so um, as I say about the only decent armor on the tank is the gun mantlet so um, it could be a pain in the butt to play and it's even worse when you don't have a good crew and as I say the first time I played through this tank I didn't have a good crew and the second time I rebought the tank to play through it I, fortunately it didn't take me that many games to ace but second time round because I'd put my good crew in the tier 10 by accident I ended up having to put a brand new crew in this tank so the second time round I'm playing this tank with an incredibly bad crew no skills no six sense and I you know it's, it's a relatively new tank and I didn't even bother putting camo on the tank that's how rare or how new uh, this tank was for me when I played this game but uh, anyway we're going to go we are here on Ensk and and again, this is a problem for this tank because it's Ensk and this is a TD that can't use traditional TD spots because it's got no gun depression. Um, but on the other hand, it's Ensk and it's not a very good TD map, but I'm top tier. Um, on the other hand, I'm top tier. So I'm going to be very aggressive. I'm moving up and you can see the speed or up to full speed here no problems accelerating and unfortunately as I say bad at shooting on the move but I end up taking a hit but I'm exactly where I want to be I took the risk I wanted to be very aggressive so I could intercept any tanks coming across the street um, so top tier and I'm not going to well I'm, I'm just going YOLO because basically on end skin a TD I'm always going to have a bad game. If I sit back and I play passively, I'm not going to do damage. I'm going to have a bad game. And I constantly say in my TD videos or my TD ace tankers that I like to play my TDs a lot more aggressively than sitting back and sniping. Now, unfortunately, sometimes you've got no choice but to sit back and snipe. But uh, in this particular game, city map, I'm going to be aggressive. So I decided to track the OI, hoping that someone would get some assistance damage. And we do. We do get a little bit of assistance damage which I think, or maybe that was done earlier, but nope, he's giving me a side. So what we're doing here is we're side scraping, and what you can see is I'm using the final gun, I've got the penetration, I've got the alpha, nice high roll, well not a high roll, but decent roll of 434, and we're just side scraping, not showing him any of our tank, 
trying to use our gun angle or our gun arc to its maximum. Um, quite difficult because the gun arc is quite narrow and as I say the um, the gun arc is quite narrow and while you can side scrape the side armor is quite effective sometimes you've got to over angle in order to try and get your gun on target because of the narrow gun arc but we take out the OI and now there's a lever here and you can see again I'm staying hidden trying to side scrape I notice the lever is fired so moving out lower glacis there we go that's what the huge penetration on this gun can do. 258 millimeters of penetration on a tier 8 is insane. So um, yeah, we're down to 12 rounds of AP left and I haven't been firing very very many shots but um, low ammo count, we get a nice shot into the lever and once again acceleration, mobility, that's what I'm doing. I'm moving around, swinging around, T54 mod 1 and of course we bounce. So trying to move back, trying to use the defender to tank some damage for me. He does. Mod 1 fires, swing around, can't get a shot at the Mod 1, but E25. And nice, but the Stere Immel suddenly appears from nowhere. Now, we've only taken a hit from the E25 and the Stere, and as a result, we're down to 166 health. That Stere hadn't been spotted. He appeared out of absolutely nowhere, and I've lost all my hit points, and this is one of the reasons I hate the tank. But there's reasons to love it. Some people love it. I've been reading forum posts where they love it, but I hate it. But nice shot into the T-54 Mod 1, and that E-25 hasn't forgiven me. He comes around, sneaks a shot into my side. Cheeky little bugger, and he gets away before I can aim. So you can see the aim time of 3.1 seconds on this gun. So you get the penetration, you get the alpha, but you get this horrible, horrible aim time. But E-25 is backed away now, and I'm wondering, can I swing around, get anything on the... Nope. T-54. No, E-25 is back. Swing around. No, I've been blocked. So, angle. Oh, we take him out. Thankfully, he didn't fire, so... I was a little bit lucky. He could have killed me only on 23 health, but for some reason he decided not to fire. I'm not saying this is a good game. I'm saying it's a lucky game, but we fire on the move without aiming fully, take out the Stille or do a lot of damage to him, and now we're being capped. So, we've only got an E-25 in the north, and I've got to go back, but I've only got 23 health. Ah... Uh, Lucky game, but 23 health. This is this is one of the reasons I hate the tank. I mean, just we're on almost 3k damage, but 990 hit points. It's it's terrible, terrible hit points. So type 64, I'm wondering if he's advancing. I hang on the corner a little bit. Thankfully, our team aren't tunnel visioning. For the first time in a long, long time, everyone seems to know what they're doing. No one is advancing towards enemy cap. Everyone is coming back to reset. E25 is on low health. I'm on low health. So we need to be a little bit careful here. So I swing around and I find the Type 64. So we take him out, keeping a building between myself and the T29. All right, so that takes us up to over 3k damage. Gets me up to three kills. Not much to shoot on on the T29, but look at this aim time. But high alpha, able to take out the T29, 449 damage on that shot. And this is, I don't know, I was just experimenting with guns. As I say, first time I ground through this tank, a long time ago I was using the 100mm and I hated it. This time around I decided, even though the DPM isn't as good, aim time isn't as good, and I'm complaining about the aim time, um, I just, I don't know, I quite liked, quite liked the 122mm on it. So, uh, okay, one tank left on the enemy team. I'm on four kills. We're up to 3.6k damage. And we've got pretty much, I believe he was a full health Emil 1 down here. So I've got enough penetration, actually, to go through the Emil 1's turret with this gun. But a little bit of derpy driving from me. I'm basically just waiting for tanks to catch up. I don't want to move in on this guy alone. As I say, I'm only on 23 health. But we're using our mobility, swinging around, a little bit of derpy driving, but unfortunately our M6 couldn't wait. And there we go, the E25 and the M6 have both died, and I'm wondering, how many shots has this guy fired? That was definitely two. Has he got any more shots? We're gonna side scrape, side scrape, and there we go. As I say, this tank you can side scrape, but that was three shots, and I'm wondering, does, does he have a fourth shot, or is he on a reload? Did I miss him firing earlier on? He seems to be hesitant to come around the corner, so I reckon he's on a reload. I decide to go for it. He's definitely on a reload. We put one shot in. He's on 500 health. Come on, IS-6. I need help. I need help. I need help. IS-6 misses. <laughs> IS-6 misses a shot. No! We put one more shot in. Four, six, uh, 465, but he's going to reload. 
and the IS-6 doesn't get around in time, uh, but yeah, ends up killing him, so I end up dying with four kills, but um, yeah, okay. So, top tier on N-Square, once again, I didn't play a TD like a TD. Um, no reason to, I was fighting a lot of lower tier tanks and, you know, it's very hard to have good TD games on Ensk unless you're willing to take risks, unless you're willing to play aggressively. Um, it's not a TD map, um, you know, you're not going to get damage if you're playing like a traditional TD on Ensk. So, we picked up the Ace, we also picked up High Caliber, we finished top on XP with 1240 and and did almost 4.5k 4, 4 damage. So yeah, I mean, even though I wasn't using the gun with the better DPM, I was using the gun with the better penetration and the better alpha, and it worked out. So I got a very, very lucky, but um, yeah, I don't mind. It's done, it's dusted. Uh, we fired 15, only uh, hit 14 at close range, and only penned 11. A little bit disappointed with some of the bounces, but one of those shots was a deliberate track shot. So happy with the damage. Uh, we spot or we uh, received seven hits and we managed to bounce two so yeah I mean our armor not very good and you know even the lower tier the Stuber and the E25 pen me although the E25 also bounced so um, it's not going to be that effective against lower tier tanks um, if they've got decent penetration but uh, yeah we spotted five damage eight destroyed four did 265 assistance damage and picked up 52 base defense points and because we weren't firing any premium ammo and that's one of the reasons I love the 122 millimeter on the on the tank um, this time around is even when you get into tier 10 games you don't need to fire premium ammo because you've got so much penetration um, and that means that the tank makes more credits than normal so uh, 40,000 41,000 credits with a premium account not bad in a tier 8 so on a times 2 left me on 3,720 XP so yeah this is a tank you're going to love or you're going to hate Personally, I'm in the hate column because while I love the mobility, I love the camo rating, I love the DPM or the alpha or the penetration, depending on what gun you're using, um, I don't like the armor. Uh, the armor is just not that effective. I don't like the um, lack of gun depression and I don't like the narrow gun arc. And if I'm using the final 122 millimeter, I don't like the aim time. But on the other hand, um, you know, it's fast, it's mobile, got great camo rating, great DPM, and depending on what gun you're using, it's got good aim time. So, um, you know, you're going to love this tank or you're going to hate it. And I'm in the hate camp. But uh, if you've played the SU-101, let me know what you thought of it. It's very hard to play this like a traditional TD because you can't use a lot of the positions traditional TDs use because they need some sort of gun depression. And this just doesn't have it. But uh, let me know what you felt if you've played the tank. Was it a good tank? Is it a bad tank? And um, are you in the like it or are you in the are you in the love it or you're in the hate it category that's what i want to know uh thank you guys for watching i'll see you next time